Part 1 of how to flash OpenWRT to ZLTS 12 Pro. We need the following tools to do so. Open the router, disassemble it, and look for the UART pinouts. Solder some wires to them for easy serial access. You may refer to the photos. Oh, be sure to power the device first before you plug in the serial device. Now download the files or the firmware. Extract the TFT PD64 because this is a requirement for us to flush the image and move the backspace WRT there. Now run that file as administrator and allow it to the firewall. We also need to download the drivers for the USB serial CP2102 as this is required for Windows 11. I will be linking the download link on the description of the video. So click Universal Windows Driver and then extract it after you download. Okay, now we are ready to use the device. Open up computer management as administrator and navigate to device manager. Now plug in the CP2102 USB serial device and follow the steps to install the driver. Right click, click properties. Then update driver. Browse my computer for drivers and then select the folder in which you extracted the universal driver. Hit OK and you should now be start to install the driver automatically. Note the COM port after we install the driver because we need this to input to PuTTY. Now log in to the device dashboard at 192.168.254.254 with the username and password that you can see if you use the Backspace Team script to gain super admin access to your device. Navigate to Management and Export Settings. This allows us to revert back to the settings of the stock firmware. Now navigate and hit reboot but do not reboot yet. We need to open PuTTY and set the serial COM port to the one that is on the device manager and the baud rate to 115200. So don't forget to plug in the device serial and the wires. Hit open and it should now open the PuTTY terminal. Now hit the reboot on the dashboard and spam number 1 on the keyboard repeatedly until you land to the U-Boot menu. As you can see, we have successfully landed to the U-Boot menu that will load the image to the RAM. Now we need to set up the static IP address for us to load the image to the router. Go to Network Settings, click the Ethernet, Properties, Internet Protocol 4, Properties again, and then I'll use the following IP address. Just copy the same on the screen right now. After that, click OK, Close, Close, and click Details to verify, then Close again. And we must be ready to boot the image to the router. Hit enter and then enter the file name 
this should start with the initramfs kernel.bin file. You can copy and paste it by selecting copy then paste by using right click. Press enter afterwards. You should now begin booting this, the firmware over TFTPD. Please note that this does not flash the firmware permanently yet. It is only loaded to the system RAM. So if you reboot or restart the router, the changes will be lost and the stock firmware will be booted up again. As you can see, we have booted the OpenWRT of Backspace. We now need to remove the static IP that we set earlier on the control panel. Just watch the steps again. Network settings, Ethernet, properties, Internet protocol 4, properties, then click obtain IP address automatically. Click OK, then close. Then confirm if the IP address has changed. And it does. Now you can visit the browser and go to 192.168.1.1. Hit login because we do not have a password yet. And you can see that we have booted up the Backspace WRT or OpenWRT for this device. Please note that we have tested this only on the Globe ZLTS12 Pro. If you have any other devices, you can try it yourself. But again, disclaimer, we are not liable if you have a broken device. Let's just explore for a while on the features of the device and open WRT. So thank you for one Conan for building the firmware and porting it with LTE support or the modem support. Currently I do not have a SIM inserted on this router so that's why we do not have internet as of yet. But on the next videos we will be using a SIM card and how to configure the router. More on that later.
This concludes the preview. We are now ready to flash the mainline OpenWRT to the device. Just go to the System, Flash Backup, Firmware tab. Click Flash Image and browse for the file that has Squash FS Sys upgrade on the file name. Now hit Upload and we will have a confirmation before we proceed. Note that you need to have a copy of the stock firmware backup that will be discussed on the next part of this video. So for now, you can stop here if you do not want to flush the device permanently. Just note that if you reboot or restart the device, you will lose the OpenWRT, but you will boot back to the stock globe firmware. So if you decide to proceed to flush the device, here is what it would look like. It will take a while before the device is completely flushed. So just sit back and relax. The device will reboot automatically afterwards. By default, OpenWRT does not have Wi-Fi enabled, so you have to plug in the Ethernet or LAN cable for you to configure the device. The default IP address for the mainline OpenWRT is 192.168.1.1. So here it is. Click login without a password because we have yet to set one. So at this point, OpenWRT is now installed to your device. In the next video as well, we will configure how to do this or how to configure the Wi-Fi and the WAN, multi-WAN and other uh, exciting configuration for this device. So again, thanks to the Backspace team for the port of this uh, device. This is also completely free and you can download the source code at the official OpenWRT Git and compile it for yourself if you have the skills to do so. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next videos.